This one's part three of the service of the 90 plus percent efficient furnace. This one we're going to check the safeties. There's several safeties in this machine. You've got uh, pressure switches, you've got high temperature limit, and you have flame safety controls. Now what I'm going to test first is flame safety controls. In the last video, we tested the flame rod and we checked the flame rod microamps. But I want to check the system to see if it's going to shut itself down if there's a flame failure. This needs to be done every time you do work on a furnace, of course certainly with a uh, general service. I found the simplest way to test the flame safety controls on these things is just to turn the fan or <laughs> turn the gas valve off. Now I've turned it off, there's knobs on some of them, there's you know various ways. This just has an on off switch. If I turn it the off, then the flame will not come on and you know the hot surface igniter should light, it should trial for ignition, and then it's in safety out. Like most of these things, will safety out three times in a soft lockout. A soft lockout just simply means it's going to try again. After three times, most of them go into hard lockout, start blinking a code, and then they'll usually, if it was a flame failure, they will uh, try again in about an hour and go through the same sequence. Okay, let's start this. Okay, the inducers come up. Hot surface igniter should come on. There it goes. Now you'll hear a clicking from the board. Okay, there's your clicking. You won't hear the gas valve click because that switch just shuts it off. Okay, obviously there's no flame, so the hot surface igniter shut off. Now what it's going to do is go through a purge cycle. It's assuming that perhaps there was a uh, gas flow and maybe, you know, there was some other reason like the hot surface igniter didn't come on. So it wants to clear the gas out before it starts again. But it will give it a minute or so and it will try a second time. Okay, there you see your hot surface igniter coming on. It's going to go through another cycle. Now, we're on the second of the three cycles. It's attempted to light again. Obviously, nothing's happened. Hot surface igniter's going off. Now, we're looking at the board. Nothing really terrible is happening. We've got a fast flash there if you look close and that means it's a call for heat but the board has not really been informed yet that this thing's not going to light and it's not going to do that until after it goes through that third trial for ignition okay now we're going to go into our third trial for ignition hot surface on again and of course it's not going to fire Okay, now two things have happened. One, the inducer is shut off, you heard it wind down, and we're getting a flashing code of two on the board. That's flame failure for this furnace, this is a train. And it turns on the fan, so why did it turn on the fan too? Okay, the reason that fan went on is to tell the customer there's something wrong. He's going to notice it blowing cold air and he's going to see if he can find out why it's blowing cold air. So if he's smart, he'll come down and look at his codes and run screaming for a service tech. Okay, now the next one I'm going to test is the limit switch. Now in order to test the limit switch, I'm going to have to shut the fan off. Now this is a variable speed fan, so I have the power off to the furnace, and so I just pulled this plug out of there. If it bothers you to do this, you can put something in to block the filter or something like that, and then you'd have to have this cover on. You can do something like that to limit the airflow across the heat exchanger, because that's what we're testing. This is the part we're testing right here. That's the limit switch. 
and what's going to happen is this thing starts up and it's going to overheat and then it's going to shut off. You got the fast blink down at the board. Okay, burners are on. Now we should have, I think this one's 30 seconds and the fan should come on. If the fan does not come on, which it's not going to this time, this furnace is going to overheat and that limit switch is going to shut it off. Now it should take, usually on these things, it's about two minutes. Uh, different furnaces, of course, are different. This one is a two-stage, so it may take a little longer because it's on uh, first stage. Okay, it has limited out. Notice the inducer winds up too. It's all trying to clear out heat. Note we have four blinks, which means open limit. Okay, what I'm gonna do at this point, I'm gonna pull the power to the furnace. I'm gonna plug in that fan again and let it operate. I put power back onto this thing and the inducer's running and the fan's running now. I want you to note that still blinking the code because the limit switch has not turned back on. It's still hot, so it's gonna be a little while before that code goes away. And then of course the unit will begin to start and run normally. Okay, now if you heard that, the inducer went off and came back on again. And if you look up, hot surface igniter's back on and the burners will come back up. And off she goes. Now in series with the limit switch, maybe several of these type switches. This is manual reset uh, rollout switch. And of course it's in the combustion chamber. These are in series with the limit switch. Now there could be some on the fan, there could be more than one in the combustion chamber. There's up to three. These I do not test. You can test them if you want. By the way, don't just pull a wire off and say I tested it. That doesn't test anything. All it tests the wiring. In order to get these to kick off, I have to heat them up. Now, I could heat them up with a torch or something like that, but I don't do that. I don't think it's useful. You can damage the switch, and, and so I just don't do it. Um, I have to assume that they are going to do their job because I don't have an effective way to test them. Now this is the last of the safety tests except for one other thing and I'm going to start this in another video. The pressure switches. This one is a two stage so it's going to have two pressure switches. Some of them have two even if they're single stage. But I'll be working with those things in the next video.